Hi, my name is Christina Walsh. I, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the Santa Susana Field Laboratory and the cleanup and the environmental impact statement that has been proposed by the Department of Energy for Area 4 and what that means to the community, how you can comment, what kind of things should concern you. So I'm going to tell you about a few things that concern me. First of all, this is Area 4, this is a very familiar map uh, to many of us who have been involved for a while. And this shows uh, basically Area 4 um, and Simi Valley is to the north. And what was frustrating to me after all of these years of being involved was the fact that um, this map does not really have much in the way of context as far as where the buildings are, where the contamination is. You see the blobs. And to be clear, the um, lavender blo uh, the lavender areas are the chemical impacts, and the blue areas are the radiological or nuclear impacts. And and then the green shaded areas are the areas that are designated to be excluded based on the AOC. So the AOC is a cleanup to background. That's called a bright line cleanup, and whenever you have that, you have to have a mechanism to have exceptions so that you don't remove clean soil that damages the environment uh, for no good reason. So, so there's a good reason to do this, but it's important to do it right. Um, so, so to be clear, the green shaded areas are the areas that are excluded based on either cultural resources uh, Native American artifacts, or, um, and it can be and, but, or um, biological resources, uh, endangered species, uh, uh, and, and so those, those exceptions are part of the mandate that is part of what's called the AOC, the Administrative Order on Consent. So cleanup. Cleanup, are, uh, as I said, is the blue parts plus the lavender parts minus the green parts, and that's the net cleanup volume, all right? Okay, so point number one. Remember, this is about commenting effectively on the EIS, the Environmental Impact Statement, uh, which is currently under review. The deadline is... Uh, all April uh, 13th, I believe. Uh, so the, it has already been extended, so it will not be extended again. So if you want your comments, your concerns to be considered, you want to make sure that you send your comments in time. Um, and so, and again, this is the Area 4 portion of the site, so the Department of Area of Energy is the discharger. So, so one of the, the really important points is proximity when it comes to this site. As I said, I have been um, working on this map for a very long time, and here we go, and we look at, you know, I go to align it, I overlaid it onto Google Earth, took a picture on Google Earth, and then I started to overlay it using that bendy road that you see right there in the center. And so once I had that aligned I've, and, and then had other landmarks lined up, I feel pretty comfortable that this is accurate. Um, but what also happened is I saw the surrounding area. So I saw Runkle Canyon. So you can see how close that is. Um, I was shocked when I saw this because, to be honest, I haven't been over there for a really long time. I injured my Achilles tendon, so I don't hike the way I used to. And also... I had been there, I'd taken pictures of Runkle Canyon, so I didn't see, um, you know, I, I didn't think there was anything that new that had happened, but apparently quite a bit of new has happened. Another uh, really important point when we do this and we take a look at this, look at the edge of the map. You know, this frustrates me because it seems to me that on all sides of the site, and this includes the bottom where it doesn't show Bell Canyon, which is immediately adjacent to the property line, here we have now Runkle Canyon really close 
really close uh, to the property line, and that is very, very steep. There is off-site contamination in the way of seeps in that area, and so this concerns me. And it really concerns me that the map is drawn just so that is out of sight, out of context, out of mind. So when we think about that, those neighboring houses that aren't included in the picture, when we make decisions, um, this to me is an important example of why this perspective, this context is important. Um, without it, the, the public is deceived. They, they misunderstand the importance, the relevance of why this matters. It's a thousand feet above your heads. We all know what gravity does. So if we also understand that it is in close proximity, even if it isn't in direct sight line, um, that's important to understand, especially when you have seeps and you have 60 plus years of operation, some of which in the early days meant pouring the stuff directly into the creeks. That's just what happened. That's a reality. So point number two, uh, when people say nothing got off site, and that's used a lot, uh, it's especially used in reference to the SRE event that happened in July of 1959, and you know people talk about how long ago that was and how all kinds of debate that can be seemingly unending um, about what exactly happened in July, even though it seemed to go on for two weeks. Um, they turned it back on before they had even figured it out what had happened. So, so there was a lot that did get out. But, but you know, despite how one might feel about what got out that day, one must also understand the overall operations of Area 4. I'm not even including the rest of the site, but in Area 4 of burning waste. Burning waste and leaving waste to decay outside for years at a time. So when we look at um, those comments, when people say nothing got outside, there's nothing to do here, there's nothing to see here, that is just not true. So when we um, look at the groundwater plume, that has gone to the north beyond the boundary. So again, that is point number one, um, or maybe we should say point two A, um, that indeed contaminants did get off site and that does mean that it has the potential to have an exposure pathway to new uh, receptors. We're receptors. Animals, plants, people, we are receptors. Um, so we know that we have seeps that emerge to the north which are contaminated. We know we've had more rain than we've had in years, perhaps decades. And we, what we don't know is when uh, these were most recently sampled since all of this rain. The other thing is that there is contamination that emerges from these seeps to the north that is shown on these, the maps provided by uh, DOE for the EIS. So here you can see in two locations um, the drainage coming from the, in one case on the, uh, on the, the lower arrow, uh, that is coming from the Area 4 burn pit drainage, and the other one over a bit um, is actually, you can see that those are all interconnected, but you can also see how close they are to the Runkel housing. So this is something that we should not be ignoring, and yet what we're hearing in these meetings is that nothing got off site. Here you can see the, the indicator, the lavender, as, as shown and defined by DOE as contamination, is that line, that drainage on the left, as well as the entire drainage past the buffer zone on the right. Um, so these things should not be ignored. And I'm going to go into some of this in a little more detail uh, moving forward. Point number three, truck routes. So there's been a lot of effort. Um, it was very frustrating to see a map that showed, I think it was 12 routes of how to move soil off the site. And that's just not the case. And the reality is really it was Woolsey Canyon. 
Um, but the fact is that there really is, as a result of Runkle Canyon, they really have developed and paved that road to Area 4. Um, and that is pretty straight, pretty wide. And because of the former mining that went on in Runkle Canyon, that's why it used to be a quarry. And that's why there, the road that leaves from Santa Susana to Runkle Canyon is very wide. It is intended uh, for heavy equipment. So this road is actually, actually an option. And you can see it there and how it leads directly to the Runkle Canyon Road. And that is really quite straight. And that provides another alternative to ease the burden off of uh, you know, the west side when it comes to bringing uh, soil and debris off the hill. So point number four, the exemptions. The exemptions from the AOC. There's a lot of talk about this. Uh, cultural and biological purposes. This should not be exaggerated. Now let me first say I completely support the use of these, especially in the case of a bright line background cleanup. It is critical that we have a tool, a mechanism, in order to protect things that need to be protected. But we should not be using these exemptions to protect concrete and debris. Um, so that is a real problem, and I'm going to go into further dele uh, uh, detail about that. Um, uh, what I did through this overlay is, is, uh, is that we're able to demonstrate that the exemptions are being used in many cases uh, to exclude cleanup on, on what I would say is an exaggerated basis because what it is doing, it is, it is maximizing the area. So in the case of, I believe, uh, the, the, what's called the shark, that southern area that is it was at one point used as a borrow pit at the at the bottom of your screen um, below those arrows um, all of that 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 whole field is I believe Bronton's milk fetch which is um, it's quite abundant there but it is rare everywhere else so it is important to protect but in this case they should bring that boundary in just a little bit so that the areas that are just adjacent to the hot lab where there was a lot of mounded debris um, are not excluded because those are big blue blobs and they should not be excused away. So I recommend in this case that those uh, be, uh, that be reduced. Here you can see it, see through it. You can see that it's a field. It, it isn't different where they've made that distinction. So there's not a good reason to take this action, but I'm going to go into further detail on each one of these. Um, in this case, this here is the area for burden pit, in which case most of it gets excluded with the green shading in addition to these drainages that are all designated on on DOE's maps as being contaminated. So these are important. Um, this other, if you see the circle, which is on the far right center of the screen, that is the Building 56 landfill excavation, and the arrow just adjacent to that is the Building 56 landfill. That is a known landfill of undocumented debris that it, the contents is unknown, but it includes barrels, parts of barrels, um, all sorts of stuff. Um, so those areas should not be excluded. Um, also below, um, if you look to above the red line, okay, that's going to be the buffer zone. So many would say, well, why, uh, why not leave that? That's really wild open space. And in many cases that is the case, but there's also a road right there. And there was an area where 80, 80 barrels were, drop to the bottom of a canyon. So those areas should not be excluded using this uh, green shading. So those are the areas that I have concern with. Uh, I'm going to go through some of those in detail. I also want to show the back of Building 19 and uh, uh, Building 100 Trench, uh, where Outfall 7 is, 
Um, and the backyard of building 19, that's an area that is a known problem area. You can see the blue right up adjacent to the building. So that should not be ignored through the use of green shading or exclusion. Here we move over to the SRE area. And this again, it is, um, and actually let's just take it first on the left hand side of the screen where you can see the, the border line to SSFL is the red line and then the yellow line above that is the border uh, to Brandeis. Okay, so those two buffer areas, they're actually called the buffer zones, um, those used to be Brandeis um, land and now it is uh, Santa Susana land. So those were never operational, however there was some debris deposited to those areas. That drainage on the right hand side that extends all the way up to the top of the screen, you can see that that one is contaminated all the way up beyond the end of this shot. Uh, so that goes beyond the property line. So that's important to remember. Um, the other thing is when we look more closely at the, uh, at the SRE, this is a little closer and you can see on the where the arrow is, the right side of the arrow, that is the tarped portion and the left side um, is the untarped portion. But you can see that almost that entire part is shaded in green, so it would be excluded. In addition, you can see the lower area and you can see it on the next screen would also be excluded. And this is where they had what was called the hot cave, where they had storage. They had a lot of stuff going on here. Um, this is a historical photograph, um, and it's shifted uh, 45 degrees, if you will. But if you look on the right upper right-hand corner of the screen, that is the SRE, just off screen. And then you have the sort of V building. The, the buildings that show on screen there, those are... Um, where the hot cave area was located. And then above, and in the very corner, upper right-hand corner, that is the RMHF building, okay? So that gives a little perspective. So when we look along this property line, we also see that there's a road that goes from the SRE complex, that V, down toward this dump area, which is in the lower left-hand portion of this photograph. The other thing to keep in mind when we shift this and we compare it to the actual mapped shaded areas is that we don't want to be protecting parking lots uh, with biological and cultural exemptions. And, and this area that had so many, uh, part of the old conservation yard had, a new conservation yard had thousands, literally thousands of barrels stored over the years. So that is not something that we can just exclude without looking very carefully. So so those are areas that I want to really pay close attention to. Remember this is after the accidents it still look like this. So this this is another shot of the the right hand portion of area four and you can see um, about uh, on the left hand side of this screen you can see the big blue blob that is the RMHF the radioactive materials handling facility and that is where um, that is the hottest part of the entire site not the SRE which is where the notch is uh, but this big blue blob this is where uh, material, high, highly radioactive waste was stored not just from the SRE and operations at Santa Susana, but also from other sites across the country. And that includes um, Idaho, that includes Fermi. Um, so we really need to think about the fact that that, that that radioactive waste came up the hill to be decladded, repackaged, reprocessed, etc. The other thing to keep in mind, when I go to the next slide, you'll see the see-through part of this screen. Um, here you can see that same shot, and you can see that the actual S, uh, I'm sorry, the radioactive materials handling facility that uh, Blacktop 
is much smaller than the blue area. So the hillside surrounding the RMHF is also highly radioactive and needs to be addressed. So these are areas that were never investigated during the, um, the RAD survey that was done under Obama. This was done under the American Reinvestment and Recovery Act. We got $40 million to do a proper RAD investigation of Area 4 to find out really what is still, what still remains, what still needs to be done in order to get this site cleaned up. Um, so it's very important that we remember that and we look at all of that concrete so we're not protecting concrete. I'm going to go back to slides also when you look to the right. Actually, I have a few more, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep going. Um, so here you can see also the debris areas that I showed a picture of. Those are areas that are largely excluded with the green shading. So that's really important that we not do that. Um, we need to do better. We really do. So to look more closely here, you can see on the lower left the SRE, the 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 untarped portion is almost entirely shaded in green, so it would be excluded despite that the backyard there, that was an area that was uh, described by John Pace as where they put everything. It was, it was a debris pile that included desks, a lady's sweater, somebody's picture of their baby. Um, this stuff sat out there for years, decaying in the wind. Um, and now you see the big blue blob that results in that backyard of the SRE. Um, and so that should not be ignored for any reason. Also, the pond, because we have information about how that was handled, we have to be very conscious about what we do here. Um, so now I'm going to move to the right. This is this blob, this green blob that is right near what we call the sliver. That narrow sliver is Area 3. Area 3 is owned by the Boeing Company, and then Area 2, which is right next to that, is NASA. So this sliver, this no man's land, was a mess because everybody could use it. Nobody was responsible. It was perfect. The other thing I want to make clear about this big green exclusion blob, you can see the little rad dots, little small ones, but they're still significant because this is where there were so many barrels of unknown contents. So when we see little areas, we should not be excluding them. We should be removing the little areas. That does, that's not that much, but it is worth not leaving it there. When we look through we can see that that is actually the power plant, the, the, the power grid that is up there. It is still up there today. You can see it on Google Earth today. So why would we use the shading to exclude that area? That makes no sense. So another thing, this is that actual area. That is that power grid. You see it on the right. This is actually shifted 45 degrees. But the, the, the line on the bottom where you can see debris, um, that, uh, including on the left-hand corner, that is the sliver. That is the no man's land. So we cannot be ignoring. And then if you look just above the uh, power grid, you can see that entire area is just barrels, barrels, barrels everywhere. Debris and a parking lot on the left. So we should not be excluding cleanup to protect parking lots and concrete. Remember, cleanup is the blue parts plus the lavender parts minus the green parts. Only the green parts that are over something that is either blue or lavender, you understand. Um, and then that would be the net cleanup volume. That is a really important point to think about because when we see, how, look how much green there is. And look how much of it overlays the lavender and the blue. So... The stuff I'm talking about is really minor details, but I believe that they're very important details because these are areas that I know, based on data, based on uh, my own collected data, as well as this $40 million study, these are serious areas that need to be addressed. Um, when we talk about the, um, you know, what happened in July of 1959, it's important to remember that there's a 60-year history 
there are 18 pages of incidents that happened that potentially um, discharged contaminants to the environment. Okay, that includes uranium fires, burn pits that ran for decades. For 10 years, they used one area to repackage uh you know, uranium. So, so we really need to think seriously about what we're talking about. And when we're thinking about the fact that we took in radioactive um, waste to be decladded that came from all over the country. So those trucks came up the hill. So we need to remember that when we talk about we, we don't have any tolerance for trucks. The other thing is that those green areas need to be deducted from the 70,000 to arrive at a real number. It's time to get real instead of trying to exaggerate everything to make everything impossible. This is not the time to make it impossible. This is the time to make it work. Um, I think most of us really sincerely want to leave this project, especially after so many years involved, with progress that is something we can all be proud of, and that's what I hope we can achieve. Um, so, please send your comments before April 10th. I say April 10th because they have to be sent by mail um, to the Department of Energy. The address is there, 4100 Guardian Street, Suite 160, that's in Simi Valley, uh, 93063. And if you have any questions, 805-842-3864, that's the number to Stephanie Jennings, and you can ask those questions. It's really important for you to... Tell them what you are concerned about. It isn't my job to tell you what you're concerned about. Those are your concerns, and that's what you should be telling them. Um, what I only ask is that you, you carefully consider the realities of how much is up there, how long it has been up there. It hasn't been up there because it's fine. It has been up there because the responsible parties have refused to do better. These agreements were signed seven and ten years ago and we're still arguing about what they mean so when we we can't now not have time to do the work because so much time has gone by that isn't a good enough reason to leave this to the next generation especially when you see Runco Canyon right there it's extraordinary um, so I hope that this is helpful to you um, and if not, I appreciate you listening anyway. Uh, thanks.